Right Dave, for the build up to your game on, on Friday night, so I think we'll start with going back to your time at Dundee. I think 100 appearances, is that right? I think so, bang uh, on. I think it was 100 starts, bang on, yeah, and about 106 or so. It was quite a lot of games as well. Right, yeah, and that was all done in the space of two and a half years, so it was, it was quite a number of games. I, I was never injured while I was here, so I had a good run at it and managed to rack up a, a lot of games. So starting out, who, who was in your youth team when you were coming through that, that, that we'll know and that come on and played? My youth team, I missed the year in front, that was a really good team, they got the BP Cup final, that was like Lee Wilkie, Jamie Langfield, um, Lee Mayer, there was quite a few of them who came through and Savo, made it. Savo would have been in that as well, yeah, Graham Bain who had a career more or less away from Dundee though, so they had a really good team, um, the one I came into, a few of the guys had okay careers, a few of them maybe made a few appearances and fell away, but the ones that made it were Derek Souter, Obviously Dundee and Aberdeen, uh, Stephen Robb, Dundee, Dundee United, St Mirren. And um, there's a few others that had a couple of appearances, Barry Forbes, um, Colin Boylan. So there wasn't too many that actually really made it from, from our group. Um, so, so coming for the youth team, were you then coming right into Kenichas and were they all there at the time? Or was it Kenichan that was there, yeah, he came in, that was probably my second or third year. My first year was with Jockey Scott then, Ivano Benetti came in the year after and I think Kenita was maybe towards the end of his first year or second year. So we were training with him, I never got to play a first team game with Kenita but to train really? with him and just see him, he, he was incredible, he was he was so far ahead of everybody else and, and we had some right good players at the time and it shows you, I think he was about 36, 37, he got a move to Rangers in the back of what he'd done at Dundee. So, Shows how good he still was even at that age. And and what, what was he like to use running about the place? Was he, was he good? Did he speak? He was fine with his young guys. We didn't really get a chance to, to speak to him too much, to be honest. You're too so nervous to speak to him. I'd have been too shy and too nervous. I was like, the guy's a legend. He's, he's and could you tell then how good he was and he was a. Oh, yeah. he's, even at his age, he's turned the pace and everything. His touch is, was incredible. His physique didn't have an ounce of fat on him, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, just it, it was great to be around guys like that. And it was, if you go and play in boys club football about a year or two before that, they've been involved with guys like that, it was, it was frightening. So you were involved in some big games as well, that probably I didn't really realise as well until I kind of looked into it a bit at the club, played Scottish Cup final, obviously Scottish Cup semi-final, League Cup semi-finals, you were involved in that, you were involved in Europe, UEFA Cup, yeah. and in a lot of derbies as well, and I can, that, that must have been good times and Round about the place when oh, it was amazing. No, it was amazing times. It was such a good feeling about the place. The players were buzzing. The fans were excited with the obviously the players that wouldn't show. We played attacking football. Obviously reached the Scottish Cup final. We we get beat. It was a it was a poor game to be honest. But I'm a goal. I think, I think it was one of the few chances in the game. And Barry Smith had the post early, early on in that game. First five minutes or so. If that goes in, it could be different. And then Amaruso scores and. I think one of the most disappointing ones was the League Cup one we, we lost and I think it was a injury time and an extra time against Livingston, the year Livingston went on to win it and yeah. we beat Hibs in the final and we had a real chance that night to, to get through and I believe if we got through we would have beat Hibs yeah. and we were a better team than Hibs at the time so that was probably the, the worst moment of, in my time here but obviously the games in Europe as well, the first first round was away in Albania I think Team Vlasny and just the experience of going out and seeing that as well and we went out there and won the first leg 2-0 I think it was and then come back here and I think beat them 5-0 or something like that we, we battered them and then you get Perugia who were obviously in Serie A at the time and, and were the Italians here at the time as well at Dundee when yeah. they played? Yeah, I, I, no, I remember Ivano Benetti actually turning up in Perugia to, to watch the game but no, it was Jim Duffy that was the, the manager at the time but we still had uh, quite a few foreigners involved in the team stuff but the team that we had at that time was full of top class players and, and likes of myself and that to make up the numbers. But to, to even to be involved in that team you must have felt like a big part of it when you were you were playing all the games it wasn't as if you were you say there you were involved, but you, you were in the team no, for most weeks and you were no, brought was, a big yeah, part if, of I, it. if I was fit I was playing. First two years I would say I'd, I'd about two and a half years in the first team here. Um, and for two of them I thought I played really well, I think the last six months of my time here for whatever reason my form fell off a cliff basically, it wasn't, it wasn't good enough, it was, I was coming out of contract and it was a time where 
obviously the club was in administration as well and in around about that time when uh, Christmas Eve in that year as well my dad died and stuff like that so it was a lot of stuff going on in my life at the time and, and my form without a doubt just absolutely fell to pieces and I remember speaking to Jim Duffy about it a few times and stuff and, mm -hmm. and I knew myself it wasn't good enough but the two years before that I felt as though I'd done really well and I was I suppose I was a big part of the team as well I was, I was the first choice right back at the time so just going back on, on those two years especially you must have you must look back on that fondly it was ah, your first senior club and amazing. The success. It was an amazing time to, to be involved in this club. It was, I think it was the first cup final in, in 40 years or something like that. So the club obviously had great times back in the, the 60s, I, I think it was, and hadn't had that same level of success since. And, and I think we underachieved a wee bit as well with the, the players that we had at the club. It's the Caballero and Mzadze and players like that, like real top class players. And, mm -hmm. I think we only had one top six finish in, in that time and I don't think that was good enough for us. And we'd each one cup final but I think if we'd managed to get a piece of silverware then yeah, they probably off. deserved it. But no, it was it was amazing times to be involved as, as a young boy playing every week with that level of player. They, they bring your game on as well, yeah. just the, the quality there. They make it so much easier for you. Like say Nacho Novo playing in front of me, we used to play 4-3-3 all the time. You'd Barry Smith sitting who would cover for full backs allowing you to bomb on. And, and stuff like that, so it was, it was just a great time to be involved and the club are really flying at the time. It must have been great as well, playing out there and I've obviously seen a wee bit of what it can be like, especially in derbies, but European nights and stuff out there, it must have been jumping. No, they were special, uh, probably they would have been full houses, was, I mean you do get a full house out there, it really is jumping, yeah. the likes of the derby games or when the old firm used to come, come to Dens and but then usually the team then that were when they were coming, like you were probably looking to beat them as well. Yeah, with the players you're talking definitely. about. Uh, Are they ex we not, felt, not really yeah, expecting? Yeah, we certainly didn't feel that inferior. And that yeah. was at a time where, like, say Rangers and Celtic were spending six, five, six million on players mm -hmm. regularly and real top quality teams. But we, we certainly never felt inferior. A few times we run them close. Um, I can't remember if we ever beat yeah. any of them, but we had a, a few draws and stuff. Yeah. But we certainly never get battered any of the games we played against them. And then we united then? How was that? Was it because <coughs> We were the better team yeah. than Dundee United. The I think, yeah, I don't think, certainly in any game that I started, we never lost a derby. I think we had quite a number of draws, but in, in the space of two and a half years, I think, we six, seven derbies and maybe won two or three of them and, and drew the rest. So we certainly had the upper hand on them at the time. So that was always, always a helping one. About like just now then? Aye, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it goes in cycles, doesn't yeah. it? Sometimes then the United yeah. are the stronger team. It, it happens everywhere. Rangers, Celtic, Hearts, Hibs. It's the day no, in cycles. And, and a good time for Dundee then to be involved in <coughs> Dundee. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. It's good to see you obviously Dundee's uh, get the upper hand at the minute as well. The top flight will Dundee United are yeah. look to try and bounce back. But I think as much as it rivalry is, I, I think there's nothing better than playing in a, a derby game. That, the games were, were something else and I remember scoring the only goal I scored was an own goal down at Tannadise a yard header Nacho Novo scored so he managed to get a 1-1 one, one drawn and save us so You scored but, a 30 yard header OG? Yeah, it was a long ball for Charlie Miller and Spironi's coming out without well, I, I see he wasn't shouting but I just didn't hear him with the, with the crowd and I've tried to nod it back to him and it's just been in slow motion and an own goal so you just want the ground to swallow you up but they say we, we never lost a derby against Dundee United. Natural saved you, Anthony. Natural did, I saved us a few times. You're not even invited them to play in your game. <laughs> I would have invited them. <laughs> oh, I don't know where he is. You know. He's probably trying to get a move back to Rangers now. <laughs> really. Right, so you had you, you touched on about the the poor six month you felt you had. Well, obviously, things were happening in the background. Do you look back on the way that you departed the club? Do you have regrets, or at the time did you feel it had to happen? A bit of both, definitely regrets because I, I never wanted to leave as we were really settled here. My, my daughter Louise was born in Dundee. She moved to Fort for a wee Yeah, I lived in Dundee for two or three years in Diggs and then uh, Laura was pregnant and we bought a house in Forfar. So we were really settled out there. It's, it's the most enjoyable place we've lived. It, we used to love Forfar, it was quiet and um, Laura really enjoyed it as well. She didn't want to move and, and circumstances kind of forced us into it because at the time, 
um, just before the administration. None of the boys had any idea that this was coming. We were told that I think it was Guy De Stefano was putting all this money in, and the club were looking to sign. I think it was a guy Jalminia from Deportivo, so they're talking about spending a million pound or something on him at the time. So the guys were were looking at this and thinking, oh, it's, the money's obviously coming from somewhere. And as a young boy, 21, 22 year old, I never once thought about the club, where's this money coming from? Is it, you just did not think about that. You're, you're there to play football and that was it. And um, I think we were in the administration, I think in December, and it must have been about November time, myself and Lee Mayer got offered new contracts. We were the same agent. Um, and my intention all the time was, I'm going to sign this. It was a really good deal. Um, it's, it'd have been more than what I ever earned anywhere else in my career. We found it had been ridiculous, it was, it was a good contract and, and you know what agents are like, agents are telling you we'll, we'll get you another wee bit and blah 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 so I'm like right fine we'll try and get another little bit of the club and before you know it the, the, the deal's gone, the club's in the administration and, and it comes out that we knocked it back because we've been greedy and stuff like that and I, I genuinely had 100% I didn't want to leave Dundee, it was, I was playing every week it, I thought it was it was going well, but I signed a contract when I was 19 or something. I signed a first year YTS, and then I got a, a new contract. It was a three year deal, I think it was, and it was on money. F I'd never made a first team appearance or whatever. It was out to uh, breaking and loan, so it wasn't a, a huge deal or anything. Like that. It was it was okay, and time that that. I never once went in to ask for a new contract, even though I was playing every week for yeah. two and a half years. So I've never been one. I was probably too quiet or too shy to, to go and chap in Jim Duffy's door anyway. They've just told me to get out. Um, so I, I stayed in that money the whole way through. And then by the time the administration came and they offered me a new deal to stay, it was less than what I'd signed when I was 19, I think. I, I've got a family. I, I literally couldn't. So it was impossible, really? It was. I couldn't afford to actually stay because we stayed in Forfar and. I'm from Hamilton, Laura's from Shorts, and neither's family is at least an hour and a half away, so we'd nobody to watch mm -hmm. Louise while Laura went out to work, so she, she couldn't work at the time, and it unfortunately came to the point where we had to go financially. Went down to Oxford, didn't it? Wasn't it certainly wasn't a huge deal going down to, uh, to Oxford, it was, in, and we never really settled there, Laura didn't sell, so it, one of the biggest regrets is I never straight away when I got off the contract signed it, you know, told. As I say with agents, you'll get a wee bit more of this club down south is interesting. I knew the club that they were talking about at the time, I knew there was no chance I was going to go anywhere. I remember Derby was one of them that was mentioned, they'd just been relegated for the um, English Premier League and I'm saying, you're listening to this and you're thinking, he's talking nonsense. I knew I wasn't good enough to go there, I wasn't quick enough to, to be able to play in the Championship or whatever. So my, my first thought always was, I'm going to sign at Dundee, but circumstances changed quickly with administration and, and before you know it I kind of had to leave and unfortunately. So away from even the contract stuff and, and the money side of that when, when it was administration what was that like? So I don't know if we know mm -hmm. we've had many players sitting down you obviously did you experience it at Livingston? No, did you we leave were, before? We just before yeah. So I had experienced it the first time and it was hard so what was that like round about the place? Cause you've spoke about mm -hmm. how great it was here you can each other all these good players <coughs> and you're seeing them and then to go for enjoying your football playing in semi-finals, finals, Europe to then being in administration what was that? Talk us through a wee bit of The that. worst part was it was right before Christmas and seeing especially the young boys young guys, YTS players that, that were on pennies and, and other players that, that weren't on good money they'd all out of a job before Christmas and I remember we all went whip round to, to get money to give these guys basically their wages for Christmas and stuff like that and seeing young boys like that and basically that was their careers over and done with yeah. some of them they, they went for so, or certainly full time clubs anyway some of them maybe yeah. went and get part time ones but the bigger ones you weren't too concerned about like say Craig Burnley, Robin Early they had wonderful careers anyway they were obviously finances wasn't going to affect him but it was it was more so the younger ones and and the staff about the place the, the whole club would have just changed overnight the, the amount of redundancies and stuff like that and, but to be fair the, the fans everybody really rallied round the, the team as well we, we had a lot of young boys were then given a chance because the, the higher earners were, were moved on so it was it was an opportunity for them to come in and 
and I think the fans realised how, how tough a time it was and, and really backed us for, for the rest of that season but it, it certainly was an easy time I probably that was obviously the worst time running about ah, your time at no, Dundee without anyway. doubt, yeah without a doubt it was, you'd get in there and myself included although the thing that probably saved me was the fact that I was the low, probably lowest paid first team player at the time so um, the chances of me getting kept on were higher than yeah. a lot of others um, it made financial sense to, to keep the, the lower paid ones that were, that were also playing as well so but getting into that room and, and basically getting told you're fired, you're kept, fired, fired mm-hmm. and seeing boys in tears and stuff like that it, was, it wasn't very nice at all yeah. and it's where you've sat and you're, you, you sound excited when you, when you speak about your time at Dundee and, and, and your I'm not going to say so much love for the club, but your your good times you had at the club and everything. Why did you come back? Or what was it like first when you come back with an opposition team? Was it strange or was it just part of obviously you went to Oxford then you signed for Livingston? Yeah. Was it difficult or was it alright or did you know really? I never really thought about it. The thing that I used to find difficult coming to the end was I said before my dad died and stuff like that and the la- the last time that he actually was like I remember him being fine was it was at the end, it was a quarter final of the Scottish Cup against Falkirk and he came up to watch a game and, and during the game he had a massive stroke so it was um, always with memories there and it was something that I found difficult when I was playing out there at times because my dad would be at every game yeah. at, at, whenever work uh, permitted it so um, to look up to the stand and, and where he would normally be and just have their thoughts because he came off that game against Falkirk and absolutely buzzing you, you knew with Inverness in the semi-final you think what a chance you to get to the final and Jim Duffy pulled me into his office and, and said come in no did he pull you right after the game? yeah as soon as the whistle went he's, he's took me into his office saying like you're going to have to get straight up to the hospital something's happened with your dad blah 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 didn't know what it was didn't know mm-hmm. how serious it was so to go for such a high to such a, a come down in the space of minutes um, and I found that difficult and obviously the fans when you come by, you, you get your stick. Because mm-hmm. the way it was reported when I left, it was, I was going for the money and stuff like that. I was leaving the club with in the time you need and stuff like that. And it, it genuinely wasn't the case, but obviously you get a lot of stick from them and stuff like that. But it happens all the time. It happens at other clubs that yeah. I never played with. Um, so I, I never found it too difficult coming back and playing. But of course, you, no matter what game you play or what team you play against, you want to win the games. Whether it's against Dundee or if I had to come back and play against St Johnston, you'd be, be desperate to win games. That's what you're paid for. You just want to win the team. I, I know you're playing for your, your your club, your fans, your teammates, and win bonuses, whatever it may be. Yeah. So you're desperate to win games. So it didn't really affect me coming back here as such. Well. Speaking to Tommy, he's he's asked me to put this in. Why did you then, when you scored a penalty for Livingston, run by the dairy and kind of do that with your ears? See, I've heard that. I, have to, I honestly can't remember that at all. So I got a wee bit raging when he told me about that. Uh, I, I know. Why did he do that? Why did he? I don't know. That annoyed me. I must because have done it if people know. people keep bringing up. So I must have done it. Um, I don't. I genuinely don't know. But so I, I, sometimes in a pitch, you do things that that you're not, not proud of. I remember once it was actually Richie Britton who we played with at Livingston and I'll not say what I shouted but I shouted something as the game was going on and, and when I'd done it I, I honestly thought why did I just why did I do that? And I remember pulling Richie at the end and apologising to him and stuff it was something that was ridiculous just no like me at all and sometimes you just do things that are just spur of the moment you, you just don't think about it at all so you had been getting abuse off the dairy all night probably that's probably what it's been I've, I've been getting hammered and then i don't know if i scored you said it was a penalty yeah, you scored a penalty we ended up lo- losing it's probably because of that a bit of karma no so we probably we beat that night yeah so but right. again it was tommy that wanted me to bring that up well, they got the run back in me then didn't they? Nah, he's not got over <laughs> it yet so then m- moving on to livingston four years there then you moved on to probably your, you and Murray Davidson, St Johnston signed for Livingston, and I don't know him. This might be true, but Derek McInnes, I think he's been on record saying that you were his best signing. He has said that, aye, so that's always a nice thing for somebody like Derek to say. He's, he's certainly one of the best managers I played under. He was, he was just one of these guys that you're just desperate to do well for. He's, he's the biggest winner I've ever met in football, no matter what you're doing, he's just desperate to win, whether it was it was golf or whatever, if you know, his team in golf, he used to 
absolutely crap yourself with a wee part of whatever because him and Tony Docker they always had a, a bet on against each other who would win whether it was in training picking two teams stuff like that everyone was competitive and I loved that sort of thing I, I thought it was great it was, I think all the boys really enjoyed it as well and um, with time at St Johnson I, I signed for him because of Del, he was a huge factor I'd never met him before and, and we did when, as you say myself and Murray were leaving Livingston Livingston were desperate for money at the time and for whatever reason, me and him gave us a package wherever we went. We actually came up to Dens to, to meet Jockey Scott um, when the club were, they were in the championship at the team at the time. Now they were signing Jeepsy and... It was around about the time, stuff. yeah, Sparky came just after, um, I think, when we came up for the talks. Um, yeah, Gary Harkins was coming in, yeah. so the club were, were going for it a bit. And, and I was really tempted to come back at the time. I, I knew it might not have been popular with the fans or whatever, but known jockey from, from his time before Ray Farning uh, was back with him as well so two of them were a big draw they were great with me in my time um, so how did that break yeah. down then what happened it that? didn't break down as such it, whatever, the, the way it worked me and Murray had to decide to go to the same place and for whatever reason Murray didn't was that just the man here. Italian owners at Livingston yeah the, the fee that they'd agreed I think was £50,000 for both of us and, and we both had to go so we spoke to a few teams, Murrowell with an R team, there was th four or five teams that were interested and in, in Murray was really keen to go to St Johnston for whatever reason. Um, and because it, it was 45 it, grand for him and 5 grand for you. That's, what, that's what I always get said, I was free I think, but they just wanted rid of me, the Italian owners, as we had in a few run-ins along with yourself and you were there. Um, so. It, it was a strange one because I wanted to either come to Dundee or go to Murrowell. Murrowell was the one that, that stuck out to me at the time because they were Premier League, they were they just finished third, they were playing in Europe, it was closer to my home, a lot of that appealed to me, but if not then I wanted to come back to Dundee. It was, um, I felt it would have been good to come back to a club that I knew where I'd done well and, and after speaking to Derek McInnes as well and and maybe that's why Murray was so desperate to go to St Johnston. He, he just had that kind of draw on you when he, when he spoke to you. I think I, I, I wanted to go there, and I, I thought, I mean, we'll, we'll go to St Johnston. And to be honest, St Johnston was the lowest wages out of the lot. They'd just come up from the the championship. They just won the league that year, and so it certainly wasn't about money. It was more about I want to go and, and just test myself somewhere, yeah. somewhere different. And, and to be honest, it's the best move I've ever made. Um, we had some, some great times at the club. First couple of years we just made sure we stabilised ourselves in the Premier League, I think two eighth place finishes and then every year after that we, we progressed as a team. Everybody always used to write you off and I think that's why we done so yeah. well. Everybody's saying that we'll never be top six again and we ended up getting in Europe, I think five out of six years, something like that, winning a cup, loads of semi finals, so it was it was a great time to be part of that club as well. So two hundred and fifty over two hundred and fifty appearances later and I think I'll ask you what your, your favourite game there was. Obviously it sticks out the, the cup final against uh, against Dundee United, yeah. That, that, that was even sweeter because apart from Dundee I probably did, won't did you still feel that then? Like, ah, like that definitely. When I mean, you played Dundee United you, they all, I always get slaughtered. Being an ex-Dundee player? Yeah, when you're playing obviously on the right hand side, you're right beside them taking throw-ins or whatever, yeah. ah, you, you get slaughtered from them, so there's always that wee bit sweeter when you beat them, and, and there was a big rivalry between St Johnston and Dundee United yeah. at the time as well, with Dundee out of the league, we became yeah. basically their rival, so, and, and remember about that time, Dundee United had an arrogance about them, they, they expected just to turn up and beat us, and I don't know why, because for two years we, we were unbeaten against them, we used to beat them comfortably, and and I think everybody had them favourites for that cup final. Don't know why. They, they, individually, you might look at it and say, oh, "You're a better team." They had Andy Robertson, Stuart Armstrong, Chiffy up front, but collectively, we were a much better team than them. We we knew how to nullify their threats, and, and we knew how to score against them as well. So that was great to to win the cup final. And obviously, against Dundee United, they made definitely it made it a wee bit yeah. sweeter. It did because. I say both Dundee and St Johnston are a bit of rivalry between the two of them. Right, so Dave, just looking ahead to Friday, <coughs> I think it, from the outside and the people I've been speaking to, I think it's a credit to to you yourself as well, the players that, are, that I've seen that are turning up, up to the game, obviously for Dundee, Charlie Adams coming up, I know he, he doesn't need to do that, never do say he's a big Dundee fan, but he, he wouldn't just come and play if he, if he didn't 
I don't know if he knows you, but if he didn't have a bit of respect for you that, that he wants to come and be involved in the game. Gary Harkins is coming back, young family, but he's he's wanting to give a wee international weekend to come and play. Barry Smith, Rab Douglas. There's loads that you could you could go through that, that, that are going to play. And then for St Johnston you've got Jody Morris is coming up. Nathan Lowndes is playing. And Alan Preston's even going to play a couple of minutes, which I find that hard to believe and I believe he's invited. But how do you feel about that? There must be a, a sense of pride and no, a great, sense of excitement. A lot of the guys that you mentioned, I don't, I don't know them. I don't know. Well, I know Gary Harkins from playing against him. I've never met him apart from from in a football pitch. Or I've never met Charlie Adam or I'm probably playing against him at Rangers. So it's great that the players like that are involved. It's obviously credit to Dundee for for organising this as well and, and helping out with the, the players. Barry Smith, I know from my time at. Dundee, Rab Douglas as well. I was a young boy when, when he was here. I never, don't think I ever played in the first team game with, with Rab. So it's great to have absolute legends like that. They are did proper Dundee legends um, getting involved as well. And obviously St Johnson side, like to Jody coming up from London. Yeah. You see an international break. He's, he's working at Chelsea at the minute and prepared to fly up and stuff like that. So it's great to have legends for, for both sides involved in it and, and willing to come up and play. So how, how serious is it going to be? Is it going to be... Are you, like, you buzzing for it? Have you? I, think I know you've been out. You've been. Well, Laura had said you've been training four times a week. So <laughs> no, I was. I trained, trained twice with still in Albion, and I, I pulled my calf. So that was the end of that. So that's the excuse. Three weeks ago, so I, I don't know if I'm fat enough to even play there. Um, but I think it's, it's players. Doesn't matter what age. I know Rob Douglas. He's been on the bench. At, I think I actually came in as he was on the bench for our growth a couple of weeks ago there as cover and he was involved with him last year and I don't know what age Rab is now, he must be mid 40s and just still his love and passion for the game, I don't think it ever leaves you, I think you, whether it's a five a side friendly or whatever, you're still desperate to win, any time I join in with the players that's still in, which isn't very regular but when you do, it's, it's like going back to the old days and, and you're one of the players and you're just desperate to win, so I think that, that hunger and, and desire never leaves you and I think, although it is it's not competitive the last 30 minutes, I'm sure, I'm sure there will be a few tackles and that flying in it as well. Hey, well I've seen Garts and the manager, they've been in the gym all week as well there. People are taking it serious. And ah. Just go, going back to the <laughs> El Garts, and he's Garts, taking it serious. Uh, Garts are the only guy slower than me on the back. So. <laughs> well, going back to, but we played in the Speroni testimony, I can remember it, there were so many, didn't a couple of thousand Dundee fans went down and like, just came back to Charlie again. Like, for him, he, it was the end of the season, his season had finished and he came and it was like a proper game for him, like he was like right up for it and again I think that's great and what you touched on and I, I do think that's what, that's, that's what this will be like and that's what people will see when, when they do come, I don't know if Charlie will ever come and play with Indy, yeah. but, but to get to see players like that in a game I think it's a credit to you and it's great that, that they're involved. I think. It's Charlie, it's he's, he's such a big Dundee fan. I didn't realise that until recently how, how big a Dundee mm -hmm. fan he was. It's probably around about Julian's um, testimony when I seen he was involved, but yeah, he's just desperate to go play. Whether it's for me or not, I think he's just want to pull the Dundee shirt on again. He's, he's that big a fan, it seems. So. I know that will be a part of it. He is, he's a, he's a die hard Dundee fan, but what I'd say to Ellery, he wouldn't just do this for MD, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think there's got to be a side to it where he wants to do it. To, to come up the road when he's got a young family down down south. So again, that, that goes back to you. Maybe you don't want to say that, or you can't say that anyway. But a lot of people in here say that's not true, and he just wants to play for Dundee. But I'm taking your side on it. So <laughs> he wants to play for you, and I think Spironi had asked to play, and he says he wanted big grab. So <laughs> I think they were a bit of for it with that. I think we'd I think we'd probably arrange for for Rab to get involved first. He's a local guy. Rab's a yeah, he's an absolute legendary guy. Yeah, know, so get moved to Celtic deservedly and, and had a great career there as well. And mm -hmm. no, it's, it's great to have these guys involved. So it's hopefully, it's, hopefully, it's a good night and people would, would turn up and enjoy it. How much happening after it? Is there a party? Is there? I don't know. I need to speak to the committee. I, I generally don't know what's they did a meeting the other day there, so I don't know what's arranged for after it, but. I'm not really party type of people unless I'm out with you, you're the only time you're the only person that gets them into trouble but um, I, I don't know, well I'll um, probably be just a, a quietish night and maybe go out on a Saturday. Right well I think for everybody behind the scenes here and the staff and all the players that might might not be there for whatever reason I think we wish you all the best and, and hope Friday goes very well and you get a good turnout. Cheers, thanks very much.